All right. Today's class, we're going to start with factorial. Now, the, the section is called counting, and you, you said 5.5? 5. 5. <laughs> Battery's dead. <sighs> yep. Counting. This is 5.5, .5, and everybody knows how to count, but what they're talking about is using factorial. Now, factorial is basically multiplying numbers in their sequence. Multiplying numbers in their natural sequence down to 1. Multiplying numbers in their natural sequence dot 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 down to one. Why didn't I say down to zero? Exactly. There'd be no factorial. Okay, so use your own common sense there and don't go down to zero because if you go down to zero, it'll nullify the whole, the whole concept of counting or using factorial. So to give you some examples, six or two factorial is equal to two times one. Three factorial is equal to three times two times one. 4 factorial is equal to 4 times 2 times 3, sorry, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, if you notice the pattern, you're basically multiplying whatever the previous factorial was times that one. So 4 times 3 factorial is what? 4 times 6 is what? 24. So 5 factorial would be 5 times, which would be what? 1,020, whatever, 120 or 1,020, whatever it comes out to be. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 5 times 4 factorial, which 5 times 25 is about 25, so about 20. I went somewhere the other day, and I asked, I, I, I don't know where it was, but I asked, I asked for a couple, and somebody said, how many, does it, how many do you want? I said, a couple. And they said, how many? A couple. And I sat there for, I bet, five minutes saying a couple. Two. I was not going to tell that girl, too, because she should have known. She was a high school graduate and everything. Finally, she said, I guess you mean two. I said, yep. All right. I'm sorry. I'm in a very cynical mood. The reason is, uh, I better not say nothing. Shut up. Keep going. Just, I don't know. There's about six people. <laughs> there's about six people outside trying to get a bird out of a drainage ditch. I saw that. Is that what they were doing? Yeah. That's stupid. Thank you. So it's, it takes two. It's called. It's it called an animal. Okay. Animals. Y'all don't know this. But animals sometimes die. Okay? It's a fact of life. If a, if a bird falls in a drainage ditch, yeah, let's call six people. Let's take them away from their jobs and let's save the bird. It's probably going to die anyway. Oh, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I need to go home is what I need to do. I need to go home and just... No, I can't do that because one of you will complain. Oh, I ain't about nothing. What's the number one rule of life? There's always what? One. There's always one. All right. So there's other formulas. There's other formulas that we're going to talk about. 
that use factorial. The good news is I'm not going to make you learn them. Okay? I'm going to let you use your calculator. Okay? Because this is very tedious, especially when you... I'm not even going to... You can look at your formulas in the book, but I'm not even going to say you have to look at them. All right? Because if you look at them, they'll be very tedious to even look at them. But you do need to turn on your calculator and make sure you can do those five, four or five examples that I just did on your calculator. Now, the way that you do that is you hit the math button and go to probability. So I'm going to show you that right quick so you'll know what to do. So, here we go. We hit 5, and then go to math, and then go to probability, and then go to factorial. And hit enter. And you should get 120. So what would 6 factorial be? 720? Let's see. We'll show you a trick I learned in the war. Second, entry, enter. There's your 5 factorial. Change it to 6 factorial. It'll save you a little bit of time. There it is. So if I want to do 7 factorial, Second, enter, and go back and change that to seven factorial. Now, if you like to go through the the five or six steps of pulling up factorial, knock yourself out, but that's an easy way to do it. Eight factorial, second, enter, change that to an eight. And there you go. I think the calculator will go up to about 73 factorial. I'm not sure. But after a while, you start getting BA numbers, and you're not going to be able to do it. So let's do second, insert, 72. Enter. Yep. Somebody try 70. 69. There we go. 69 to the daggum 98th power. That's a BA number. Okay? That's got like 97 zeros in it. Okay? So we're good there. All right. Now, what kind of problems are you going to see in this section? Well, you're going to see arrangement of blocks or arrangement of letters. Let's say that I give you the word smile. How many different configurations of S-M-I-L-E can you make up? Okay. Now, I didn't say meaningful combinations, did I? I said combinations. All right. The meaningful combination would be miles, like miles per hour, miles. I can make up one. That's a meaningful uh, hmm? Yeah, limes, that's another one. Those are meaningful. But that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for different configurations. Think of it as alarm codes. Okay? So, how would that be? Well, how many letters are there? So it would be 5 factorial. And that would be, we said it was 120. So there's 120 different combinations of this word. Okay. Now there's one in the book. I can't remember what it is because I don't have a book in front of me because you know we're in such a technological savvy college that we don't have the public we don't have the right flash drive on I mean the, the right plug-ins on the computer. So anyway uh, one one I can't remember. I'm not even going to show you because I can't remember, but it has to do with license plates. Okay? And the license plate has, has, uh, they do like 26 times 20. 
Five times three. Well, you got you use factorial, and it has one one letter for one space for a letter, and it has five spaces for numbers. Okay, and the numbers are from zero to one. I meant from zero to nine, which is equal to ten. Ten numbers. Okay. And the way that you do this type is, of course, there's 26 letters, so that would be, um, that's 26, because 26, there's only 26 letters there. And then here, you have 10, so that would be how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that would be 10 to the 5th power. So you multiply 26 times 10 to the 5th power. Okay, after today, when I send IT an email about this, hopefully by Monday, you will be fixed and I can show you the problem. But it's in your book, I think. So you would take 10 to the fifth power and multiply by 26. Now, this is a different type problem, okay? This has to do with a license plate. And you notice I'm not using factorial. I'm using a what? An exponent, okay? So that's another type problem. You're not going to see a lot of them, but um, the ones I'm going to mainly stick to are going to be your factorial problems. Okay? So this can be a test question. I'm going to put blocks. There's one question, uh, a standardized test question that says, a uh, baby has seven blocks. How many different configurations of the blocks? Can the baby make or whatever? That'd be seven factorial. Okay? So, you know, whenever you're talking about blocks or smile or words, or even, you know, you have you have a code at your at your home and you can use five numbers, or not five numbers, yeah, no, not five numbers, five letters. Okay? That's the same type problem. Okay, and we'll get into that Monday when I can get into the book, hopefully. All right? Second type problem is the combination. Now, combination, I'm not talking about a combination lock. Combination means no order. And where you're going to see this question is the infamous lottery question. And if you ever take a standardized test question, a standardized test, you will see the lottery question. All right? Now there's two or three things about the lottery question you need to realize. And the number one thing is if you're asked the odds or the probability of winning the lottery, it's assumed that you bought at least what? One ticket. And that's what they forget to tell you. All right? Now, unless it says one ticket, and it says the probability of winning, then you're going to put the answer under one because it's assuming that you're buying one ticket. All right, now I disagree with some of the homework questions and some of the test questions in this unit because it will not say probability of winning or it won't put or it won't ask for the one over because it says the probability of winning. So I'll be, I'll be extremely lenient on your test questions with this because I, I disagree with the book on their ignoring this one thing. They'll say, what is the probability of winning? And then they'll just want the denominator. Well, you can't just you can't you can't do that. You can't mix an apple and an orange and call it an apple. You can't ask the probability of winning when you didn't even purchase a what? Yeah. Ticket. So that's a very big big deal with me. So make a note of that. Um, let me just uh, give you an example. Let's look at the South Carolina lottery. Okay, and let's look at 
Let's pull up the South Carolina lottery and look at it. Hopefully this school will be able to pull up the web page for it. Well, no, we may not be able to get to the internet. Our modem may not be working. Let's see. South Carolina education lottery.com. There we go. And let's look at the Powerball and how to play. Now this is the type of question you'll see on a, te on, a, on a test right here. This first part right here. So I want you to write that. You don't have to write down every single word. But mainly just the first sentence. Select five different numbers from 1 to 69 and one from 1 to 26. That's what you need to write down. Let's see if I make this a little bit bigger. Does this get bigger with y'all? And easily look. Is it getting bigger? Yeah. Oh, okay. We can start using that. We'll make it short bus big. How about that? Is that big enough for you? Yeah, that's good. Thank okay. You. All right. So, write that first sentence down. Because I'm going to give you one just like it with the mega million in just a minute. And you're going to do it. Now, does the sentence say anything about order? No. So most of the time when you're talking about a lottery, you're talking about a combination. In Iron Man 2, when uh, Iron Man, what's his name, Stark is sitting in the donut shop with Samuel Jackson. You all know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. What has what has Stark tried? He's tried every what? Every combination and every what? Every what? Every combination and every what? Come on. You don't watch movies. I watched it. I don't know what you're talking about. Every combination and every permutation. Combination means no order. Permutation means what? Order. Order. So when you've tried every combination and every permutation, what is that saying? You've tried what? Everything. Because you've tried it without order and you've tried it with order. So this thing says 1 to 69. So you got two parts to a combination. You've got the N and you've got the R. Write that down. The N and the R. You've got the N and the R. Now what have I always told you that N is? It's always your what? Population. It's always your biggest number. Okay? So N, big C, R. So you're going to take the denominator you did your bottom ticket, and you got what was the what was the first number? How many balls were there? I'm sorry, what? Or is that the numbers? How many balls were there? Five. Five. So what's bigger, 69 or five? The 69 combination five. That means you got 69 numbers on five balls. Everybody with me? Okay, and then multiply that by what's the second part of it? You got one ball with how many numbers? Twenty-six numbers. N C R N C R combination, and that's the answer. So let's go to our handy dandy calculator. And this is the one you don't want to look at as far as the formula. 
It's in your book, and you can look at it in your book if you want to, but I wouldn't. So here we go. And I'm going to use my stove feature. What's stove? It's where you get bread. That's stove. Stove feature is right here. And that means what? Store. Where you get the bread at the store. You're going to store it. So I'm going to take my handy dandy, I mean number 69. Was it 69 numbers? Yes. And I'm going to hit math, probability, and then which one am I going to pick? Number three, gifted and talented. You are so smart. All right, hit enter, and then I'm going to put what? Five, and then enter. That's a BA number, so I hit stow, and I'm just going to say alpha A for the first for the first number. Enter, and then I hit clear after that. Now I hit second entry. Second entry, and I change it to 26. Combination of what? 1, which would be 26. And I'm going to stow that, and alpha what? What comes after A? B. And now, I'm going to say 1 divided by parentheses, Alpha A times what? Alpha B. And hit enter. And there is my probability. You got eight zeros in that guy. So point zero 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 three four two 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 nine seven eight one. Let's go to our handy dandy spreadsheet. What the heck is he going there for? Well, I'm going to show you a trick of learning the war. Back when the lottery, I don't know if some of y'all remember this, but back when the lottery came to South Carolina, oh my God, the world was going to come to an end. Why? You can't have the lottery down there in South Carolina. Them people are stupid, racist, and dumb. Okay? You can't let them people have the lottery because they'll go out and spend their whole paycheck. Them people are stupid down there in South Carolina. That's why. Wasn't nothing about no dang Bible Belt. It was about because we just had got we just had got rid of what was it called the poker machines. Oh my God. Now the poker machines was the crack cocaine of of the of the uh, gambling industry. It was just right there with cigarettes and. And meth, all right. It, it was right there. I mean, that 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 was the worst thing to ever hit South Carolina. I mean, you had you go into a store and there'd be kids running around in their diapers wanting something to eat, you know, while mom and daddy was playing on the. Now that was that was true. That was the crack cocaine. It was awful. But the reason after the you know of course the uh, poker machines came through. Oh my God, South Carolina can't handle the lottery. Them people were going to drive themselves into the lake. I mean, they were cra they just was crazy about it. So, what happens when Bubba goes to the store and buys a bunch of lottery tickets while the while his kids are running around with diapers? That's what we're going to see with the spreadsheet. All right. So, first of all, we need to do n is equal to 69, and r is equal to 5. And n is equal to 26. No, what what did we say it was? How many numbers? 26. And r is equal to 1. Well, how are we going to do this on spreadsheet? Well, on spreadsheet you can use the word combin. C O M B I N. I'll show you how to use it in just a second. But we're going to buy one ticket. Bubba's going to buy 10 tickets. He's going to buy 100 tickets. He's going to buy 1,000 tickets. Oh, let's, let's make it 500. 500. He's going to win that lottery because he's in South Carolina and he's ignorant. 1,500, 2,000. And then we're going to jump up to, let's jump up to 
Yeah, let's jump up to 5,000, and then after that, we're getting really stupid. Let's jump up to 10,000, because we, we want, you know, we got to have, we got to have, you know, the kids running around in diapers. They made a mistake after the 10. 20,000. Let's go to 50,000. Let's go to 75,000. Oh, gosh. Get to a... Let's go to a million or a hundred thousand. Hundred fifty thousand. One million. <laughs> and let's finish off with two million. Because us us people in South Carolina. We stupid. So we that's we got we got to worry about those people in South Carolina. All right. So about one ticket. So I got to find out what my denominator is going to be. So we just did that in the so we're going to do it right here. Okay. So we're going to say equals come bin. See it right there. Come bin. Parentheses. 69, comma, 5. Close parentheses. And then the second one should come out to be 26, because any time you do a number with 1, it comes out to be that number. So we're going to check your math. Equals come in. Parentheses, 26, comma, 1. Comes out to be 26. So, I'm going to take my handy dandy and I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to divide by parentheses this guy times this guy and I'm going to lock it and hit, wait a minute, i got to lock both of them, I'm sorry, hold on just a second, F2, F4, there we go. Enter. And we're going to go down here and go all the way down. And now we're going to just round it to a... Everybody everybody agrees we think in terms of a tenth decimal point, don't we? That's what we think in terms of. So I'm going to round it to two decimal places. What are you saying, Miss Burdett? What, what what are you saying? You're from South Carolina, aren't you? I can't buy a lot of You're supposed to you're supposed to be saying you said that's not good though. Why? This is low to zero. Okay, keep going. You can probably buy a million and you still ain't probably gonna win. Okay, but you don't know that because you're from where? South Carolina. <laughs> and you don't know that because yeah. you know, you're stupid. Okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> so even if you buy a million lottery tickets, who's smarter? Bubba that buys one lottery ticket or Bubba that buys a million? Neither. Bubba that buys one ticket because you can't win if you don't what? Play. Play. If you're going to play, you want to take that chance. Are you smarter buying one ticket or a million? One. One. That way you don't lose too much money. Yeah. And yeah, you can kids don't run around the store and die. Yep. Sounds good. So if you learn anything today, just buy one lottery ticket. You don't need to buy a million. And that's how you do combinations. How are we doing easily? Look, I done made her mad. She left. <laughs> one person left, and then she comes back another person. Y'all got something against me or something? No, they're not going to talk. They're thinking about it. They're just going to sit there. <laughs> Not say a word. Do y'all actually have your microphone on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. They say yeah. Okay. So they're they're alive. All right. So how many lottery tickets do y'all buy? My mom did that nine. Huh? Easily. How many do y'all buy? Nine. nine. I buy ten. My mom's scratch No, I don't. No, I don't. I buy five. <laughs> I'm sorry. It costs ten dollars. That's about how many we do. So I'm right in here. I'm between zero and zero. Yep. Your chance to 
something, you do a lottery ticket. Yeah, you do. That's why I buy those instead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I asked easily, but you were out of the... How many lottery tickets do you buy? None. None? Okay, mm -hmm. well, no. y'all can't win if you don't Listen, play. Here's the truth. <laughs> Okay. What you do is you go and you photograph a bunch of them and then you superimpose it computer graphically onto one and then you can win. What? No. That's no, a that lot of effort work. if you're trying to win. No, no. That's a you lot know what, of Do you want to know what my brother's trick is? What's that? Okay. So where we work at Publix, a lot of people do the lottery tickets. So he goes in the trash cans, takes out the lottery tickets. And he sends them back down to Columbia. No, and he takes them and then checks over them. We actually have found other Oh, yeah. We found unscratched lottery tickets and winners. In yeah, the yeah. People do, they can't see it, so I don't even look at the numbers. When I play a scratch off, I just do the bar and I check it. Yeah, we Because your eyes will fool you, and you'll see two numbers that match, and you won't even see it. So there's a lot of people that throw them away. Oh, Another yeah. thing is, some of those he can mail down to Columbia, and they'll send a new, a new one back. You need to you need to do that. Anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll shut up because somebody's going to say I'm trying to get you all to gamble now. All right, so the, the main thing you need to realize here is the probability really don't start changing until you get to 20 million or 2 million. Now, what's the, what's the lesson in that? 2 million. You're buying two million lottery tickets. What's the lesson in that? If you've got two million dollars to spend on a lottery, you, should put your money somewhere you else. need to put your money somewhere else if you're that rich. Put it in the house. Okay? Not many people in Anderson, I don't think there's hardly anybody in Anderson that can put two million dollars in a lottery. Now, there's a lot of people in Anderson that think they can, I mean, but they can't make that payment on that Escalade if Ooh. they do. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, that Mercedes that they're driving around, they can't make that payment on it. All right, shut up, Hubert. All right, so what about a permutation? Well, a permutation is order. So let's talk about a permutation. Permutation. is order. Usually you'll see a standardized test question with permutation considering a board or a committee. Okay? And when you're talking about order with a board or a committee you're talking about offices. Officers, sorry. Officers like president, vice president, secretary, and what? Treasurer. Also, another thing, horse races. Horse races. What do the horses come in? First, second, and what? Third. Anybody ever heard of a trifecta? Okay, that's where you bet on the first three spots on race at a race. Okay, that's what you're doing. All right. So the two types of questions you're going to see with a permutation is going to have to deal with most of them on a standardized test. It's going to have to do with a order on a horse race or a board. All right. Okay. Let's say that. We take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten people in this class. Ten people in this class. And we're going to have an election, and we're going to elect a president of the class and a vice president. Okay? How many different permutations? do we have? Okay, why did I not ask for combinations? Because I'm asking for a what? An order. So you need to highlight the president and the vice president in your notes and that dictates order. So if you're reading a question in a test or a standardized test and it says vice president, president, something like that, 
then you know you've got to do a permutation, even though it doesn't say use a permutation. All right, somebody tell me what my n is. 10. 10. How'd you know that? Good job. I'm impressed. Okay, so that takes out the 10, takes out the permutation. So what's the only thing left? Two. Now somebody do that in your calculator. It's right below combination. I'm not going to do it in the calculator because if you can't find permutation and I just showed you combination, then we need to talk. How many? So there's nine different permutations of vice president and president in this class. How do you know? Well, let's take Miss Burdett, for instance. Miss Burdett, as president, then vice president is about else. So that means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine different realities are nine different permutations of the vice president with Ms. Burdett. Okay? Capiche? And then you pick someone else and run a vice president. So each one has how many? Nine? And how many people are in a class? So what's ten times nine? It's a mirror. All right? Now, let's say that the second part of the question, and this will be the second part of a question on a standardized test with a permutation, it'll throw a combination in there too. It'll say, what about a two-person committee? Well, what would a two-person committee be? A combination, because on a committee there is no officers. I serve on the land use board at Anderson County. I'm the chairman because it's a board, all right? A board means structure. A committee, no structure, okay? Now, some of your church committees, yeah, they don't, really don't count as a committee. They kind of have a chairman and all this, okay? But when you get into a reality board committee situation, your board will always have officers your committees will not. Okay? All right. So what is a committee? What would that be? Ten, combination, two. So somebody do that one for me. Ten, combination, two. So there's 45 different committees that we could have. Why will the permutation always be more than the combination? Think about it like this. Miss Gambrell, right? Garrett. Garrett. Sorry, I knew it was G. What color is Miss Garrett's shirt? Don't say it. Okay. All right. Now, what if I ask you, what color is Miss Garrett's hair? Which one are we going to get more answers on? Different answers. You think? The shirt. The shirt. Why? Because they like pink. Because they like pink. Coral. You know. You can just get in on the colors. Yeah, you can get on on colors because I'm asking for more detail. Yeah. I'm asking for something that has more detail. For her color of her hair is brunette. Okay? Why? Why does the permutation have more than the combination? Because what the permutation have? which means it's more what? Detailed. More detail, more numbers. Capiche? All right. The permutation will always have more because it's more detailed. The color of Miss Garrett's shirt, pink. I'm not going to pronounce this word because some people don't pronounce it the correct way. Salmon. Salmon. Y'all seen that Snickers commercial where the guy goes, Almond? 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 Almond. Almond. Almond? And then he runs in the ditch. 
<laughs> That's a funny commercial. Salmon. Uh, salmon. Salmon. Coral. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell coral. Coral. <laughs> is it coral? Is that coral? I don't know. The whole point is, there's three, and I don't even know I'm right. Okay? But if I asked for her hair color, the first thing you'd say is brunette because that's a hair color. There's like three hair colors. Blonde, brunette, and redhead. Okay? You're not going to sit there and, oh, it's a little off brown. No, nobody's going to say that. <laughs> if I ask you for hair color, you're going to say blonde, brunette, redhead. Unless you're a cosmetologist or somebody like that, which that doesn't count. All right. So here, without even thinking about her shirt color, I come up with three answers. Here, I only come up with one. So you need to put that to your association in your brain. Always remember your permutation will have more. Capiche? All right. So that's the three type, three or four type questions. We'll go over some more of this in the next week. Next week, when I have access to the to the uh, book, but right now you're responsible for 5.1, 5.2, I think, and 5.5. Now I want to cover 4.1 and 4.2. Now I'm going to cover this probably today and whenever y'all come back, Tuesday, Monday, whatever. Okay? Um, before I do this, I want to go to YouTube so I can have somebody moan and complain to my department head that I'm pulling up videos in class. Well, I know somebody will. I don't know if I can even find it or not. Let's see. What's the matrix? What's the matrix two called? Matrix two. There we go. What's, what was it called? The Matrix 2. How you spell restaurant? It's one of those words I can't ever spell. I know it's got a T in it. Is that it? How you spell restaurant? I don't know if you're still the wrong person. There it is. Matrix Reloaded. Well, I wasn't too far off, smarty pants. Can I get a picture of that? Please? No. Let's see. Now, look at the word right here. Causality. Write that down. Oh, I've seen names from this. Okay, now whoever's going to complain, make sure you get the make sure you get the movie right, okay? Can y'all hear and easily? Yes. Take the big remote. Y'all see the remotes? Mm -hmm. And turn up the TVs. It says the volume's all the way up. Okay. Go to your speaker on your computer. Uh, uh, here he Can you hear it now? Just kneel yes. on himself. Right? And so legendary morphines. And Trinity, of course, si belle qu'elle me fait souffrir. I have heard so much of you, Adam. Please sit, join us. This is my wife, Persephone. Something to eat? Drink? <laughs> of course, such things are contrivances like so much here. For the sake of appearance. No, thank you. Yes, of course. Who has time? Who has time? But then if we do not ever take time, how can we ever... Chateau Aubryon, 1959. I love French wine. Back I love the French language. I have sampled every language. French is my favorite, fantastic language. Especially to curse with. Nom de Dieu, de putain de bordel de merde de saloperie de connard dans cuit de merde. It's like wiping your ass with silk. I love it. I am a trafficker of information. I know everything I can. The question is, do you know why you are here? We are looking for the keymaker. Oh, yes, it is true. 
the key maker, of course. But this is not a reason, this is not a why. The key maker himself is very nature it's a means, it is not a method. So to look for him is to be looking for a means to do what? You know the answer to that question. But do you? You think you do, but you do not. You are here because you were sent here. You were told to come here and then you obeyed. <laughs> it is, of course, a way of all things. You see, there is only one constant. One universal, it is the only real truth. Causality. You hear that? Action. Reaction. Cause. Effect. Everything begins with choice. No. Wrong. Choice is an illusion created between those with power and those with power. Look there. Okay. Now I'm going to go there. All right. What's he saying? Causality. Cause and what? Cause and effect. Okay. There's a part in the movie, I don't know why it doesn't show it on here, but he says, I drink too much wine, I have to pee. Okay. That's called cause and effect. When there is something that causes something else, that is called causality. Write it down. Because this is very confusing to a lot of people. Causality. I hope I spelled this right. Causality. Cause and effect. Now, what does that mean? That means that this has to do with this and this has to do with that. What if I told you that the number of suicides in California goes up with the number of Nicolas Cage movies played at 7 o'clock in the afternoon? Okay. Does it have correlation or does it have causality? Correlation. Causality is when one has to do with the other. Now, I don't know what your personal nat natural effects with liquids is, but everybody has them. Okay. Some people can drink beer, look at a beer, and go to the bathroom. Okay. Some people do that with wine. Some people do it with water. Okay, but that is the best analogy I can give you with causality, all right? Because one has to do with the other. If you don't drink a lot of wine, you won't have to go to the bathroom as much. Same way with water, same with beer, same with Kool-Aid, whatever you drink, okay? But this has to do with going to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom has to do with how much water or how much wine you drink. They have to do with each other versus correlation. Correlation is when you see something that is in common, but they have nothing to do with each other. Okay? Common, but not nothing to do with each other. Okay, let me let me say this. Okay, tell me if this is causality or correlation. We don't have any Chick Fil A's, Quick uh, QTs, Wendy's in LA because of crime rates. Is that causality? Yes. That is causality. Think of Lower Anderson. Is there a QT in Lower Anderson? No, there's not. Hell to the no. There's not one. Okay. Is there a Chick-fil-A? Is there a Brewster's? Is there a Wendy's? Okay, why not? Because they don't want to get robbed. Waffle House found that out. It's been shot up three times. <laughs> and that's, just, that's, that's not even in L.A. It's in, center, it's in central L.A. Okay, it ain't even in L.A. And it got shot up. Okay? So there is a causality there. We don't have those nice places because they don't want to get robbed. Okay? Versus 
Correlation. What would be a correlation? I have no idea about restaurants. You know, maybe uh, there's no seafood places in Lower Anderson because everybody had seafood in Lower Anderson. I mean, that, that would be correlation. All right? That has nothing to do with... Nobody would be able to do that unless you did a survey on what people like to eat in Lower Anderson. All right? But the best kind of sample I can give you is suicide rate suicide I don't even know how to spell it suicide rate versus a movie okay or an actor's movies I used Nicolas Cage because in one of the books that I looked this up in, <coughs> excuse me they had a example and they said the suicide rate in Hollywood California went up the same time Nicolas Cage movies were playing at a local theater or something like that, okay? Was there causality? No, okay? I don't care how good or bad of an actor you are, I ain't gonna kill myself over a bad, a bad movie, okay? And nobody would do that, okay? So, but is there, now a lot of people can say correlation is another word for what? Coincidence. Yeah, that's right. Thank you for filling that gap in while I was writing. Okay? Coincidence? Is it a coincidence that the Nicolas Cage movies and the suicide rate in BFA, California was up at the same time? Yes, that is called a correlation. All right? Now, the correlation can be upward and it can be downward. Correlation and slope have a lot to do with each other. Okay, remember your slope back in algebra where you figured it was a positive slope or a negative slope? Okay, that's what you're going to be dealing with with correlation. There's also a correlation coefficient that you're going to get in your calculator. It's called R, lowercase r. Okay, and it's going to have a lot to do with your slope also. It's going to kind of go in relation to your slope. The whole point is all this don't mean anything unless you know the difference between causality and correlation. Because if you don't know the difference, then you're going to be in trouble. All right? And there's the difference. And I hope I've been pretty basic. Let's, let's put right here wine bathroom. And for those of you that don't drink, you can put water here if you want to. Okay? Wine or water means that you're going to the bathroom more. Is there a causality between citrum, what is it called, citrus and citrus nitrate, and going to the bathroom? You know what citrus nitrate is? Is that stuff that you drink, that you get at Walgreens and you drink, or, you, or they give it to you before you take col colonoscopy? Oh. oh, that's rough. Oh, okay. Now we now we got now we got the little light. Come on, all right. Causality. Does it make you go to the restroom? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about this. Eating five Big Macs a day will cause you to get big as a house. Cause and effect. Yes. Causality. Yes. Oh, it's been a long day. So much weight. <laughs> okay. But. Does it have to do with each other? If you quit eating Big Macs, will you stop gaining weight? Probably. If you stop eating five a day, yes, you probably will. Okay, same thing with the bathroom. Does both of them have to do with each other? Gaining weight, eating a lot. Eating a lot, gaining weight. Versus common, but nothing to do with each other. How about this? The larger the SUV, the worse the gas mileage. Is that causality? Yes. Because the larger the, the larger truck you drive, the less gas mileage you have. Okay? That's why a Dodge 3500 Buley cannot compare to a 
go-kart, whatever they call them now, with the electric motor in it and all that stuff. Okay, we try to pull a 36-foot gooseneck with a Prius. Okay, it don't work. All right? The whole point is, there is a causality. There is causality there. If you drop weight off the truck, if you strip down the four-wheel drive, if you just have a two-wheel drive, if you strip off the tires, if you strip off the bed and put an aluminum bed on the back, will that increase the gas mileage? Yes, because you're not pulling around as much weight. Okay, cause and effect. So, with cause and effect, we can have a correlation going up, and we can have a correlation going what? Down. Weight. E I G H T. Weight of vehicle. Gas mileage. And this is a this is a decreasing correlation or causality. But it does have correlation. Correlation is saying, is there something there? That's what you need to remember. The correlation coefficient. Is there something there? A correlation coefficient of negative 1? Yes. A correlation coefficient of positive 1? Yes, there's something there. A constant? would be there ain't nothing there. Meaning it's what? It's horizontal. So you got a positive one, a negative one, that means there's something there. Zero means it's horizontal. Friend day? Okay. Now, when you do on your calculator and say I've got to look this up because I forgot it's under um, I can't find it right now but there's a list somewhere on your calculator where you can list all the functions and I can't see it with this ultraviolet blue that they got written on here I can't hardly see it but anyway when you do second when you do uh, stat well, let me turn that blame thing back on. When you do stat and you go to calculate, first uh, linear regression, and you hit calculate, I don't think it's going to do it. No, because I haven't put anything in it. So let's go to stat, edit, and you put in your points. Uh, two... This is your X's. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's your X's. And then your Y's are 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13. Okay, that's your X's and Y's. You got a line going, it looks like it's in a positive direction. You hit Stat, Calculate. Linear regression, L1, L2, frequency, blah, blah, blah. Hit calculate. And see, this one's not doing it. You can actually hit, and I can't see these. I think it's second list. I've got to find it. But anyway, there's something you can hit, and it'll show you the R. And somebody may have it on their calculator already, but I've got to actually find it because sometimes it's defaulted to where it will not be on there. So I'll have to uh, find that out, and that's what I'll do for for what frequency list. No, nope. it's called display or something, and it's not showing up. So I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to find that out. But if you do it on your calculator and you get the R, 
then that means there's a correlation between the two, which means there's there's causality. Okay? Can you have correlation but no causality? And that's the question. Can you have correlation and causality? Yes. Can you have correlation and no causa causality? Yes. Okay, that's the that's the suicide rate versus the Nicholas Cage movies. There's correlation, but if you think that one caused the other, then you're crazy. All right? And that's the question you have to ask. If you drink too much, do you have to go to the restroom? Yes. Okay? Is there causality there? Yes. Versus something that doesn't have anything to do with each other. And that's where you have to know the difference between the two because it's uh, it's just one of those things that you have to think about. Because when I asked the question a while ago, the weight of your SUV versus gas mileage, some of y'all have to think of it. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Some of you have to think. And you do have to think between causality and correlation because sometimes, sometimes you don't know. Okay, and that's where you type it in your calculator and you get out an R factor and if that R factor is close to 1 or negative 1, then there is a correlation. If it's like 0.5, then there is no correlation. 0.5 is like 0. Okay, well, 0 is 0. 0.5 is not very good. 0.5 is like, like that, but we'll get into that. Any questions on this? Now, and that's 4.1 and 4.2. So, what I want to do is I'm going to open up all the homework for 4.1, 4.2, 5.1, 5.2, and 5.5. Anything else in Unit 3, I'm going to avoid out. So that means you don't what? Have to do it because this is the only stuff that's really important. So what I want y'all to do over the weekend is work on those sections of homework and then come in, send those questions in, and put the come back. Tuesday, we'll go over all homework questions pertaining to those five sections. If no homework questions is sent, I'm going to assume what? That you understand it, we're going to go ahead and preview the test, and I'll assign the test. Does everybody understand? Yes, sir. All right, y'all have a good weekend. Glad y'all got to see me today. <laughs> Tell everybody in Easley that missed class, we had a test today, and they got a zero. Oh. Okay. Y'all y'all settle down and easily. Settle down. Y'all know y'all gonna give me a complex. <laughs> easily campus is gonna give me a complex. I'm gonna have to put smokestacks on my pickup truck. Oh my gosh. See y'all. Bye. Bye. See ya.